What is up YouTube? Today's video is gonna cover building a deep learning neural network the easy way. Uh, the One of the easiest way I've seen yet, uh, at least for me. And I'm gonna do it via a tool called Percepti Labs. All right, this tool offers a visual approach of building a, a DNN. And you can do a lot more than just building DNNs. And uh, it is uh, in a sense quite configurable uh, where you can just uh, mix and match in these components which are working for you in, in a visual way and then uh, also kind of use this to build the model and export it a as a Python notebook or even as a model, as a TensorFlow model. So it it's kind of building uh, internally TensorFlow models and then we have this all visual way of kind of building this where you can uh, drag and drop multiple components, multiple uh, algorithms and use them to just build your models. So yeah, uh, it kind of makes uh, the idea of uh, building machine learning models easy and also especially I would say deep learning models uh, a lot of the times deep learning models are like so complex and it needs all, all this data and uh, a lot of the times you don't know what's, what's happening beneath this uh, complex deep learning model with all the nodes and all the epochs. One of the best way I feel uh, understanding a DNN is uh, using this website from TensorFlow, playground.tensorflow.org. So it kind of uh, shows you uh, different types of neurons, different layers of neurons you can present and uh, uh, basically um, a deep learning network kind of works with sets of neurons and you can arrange them in layers. So as you can see, so we've got like d different neurons uh, in a layer. So it's like this is one of the layers, the second layer. And uh, the more complex the model is, the, the, num the more number of neurons it's inside of this. So for example, you can increase the number of layers and add the number of neurons to different layers. And then this, this kind of becomes a complex machine learning, deep learning model. And uh, a lot of the times it's very really difficult to un understand uh, what's happening beneath this model and how it's being trained and I think that's where the the kind of approach from Percepti Labs it's uh, it's very uh, easy way to understand and what's whatever is going on underneath and uh, it's kind of a debug way of showing things and it's also very good to kind of show it to stakeholders so yeah as an example I'm just going to try to run one of the layers and see how, how it's, it's kind of defining. So as you can see, these are like two clusters. So you can consider a machine learning model which kind of trains over this data set and says, oh, and draws a line between these kind of two clusters. So it's, it's a very easy way of showing uh, how a machine learning model works inside. But yeah, let's just go ahead and try out the tool for now and uh, see how it works. To get started with this tool, you can go to the website and check it out, obviously. Uh, I would really recommend you checking out the docs uh, and getting started with it. But it's very easy, It's it's it already is like a pip package. You just need to install this pip package. I did it globally. And just make sure the Python version is, bit, is less than 3.9 and it's like Python 3 but less than 3.9. And that's kind of what worked for me. After you have that, you can easily uh, just call in Percepti Labs as a command and it's gonna run it locally. It's going to take some time initially to uh, get the setup done but once it's done it's easy to just uh, uh, run it from the command line and that's where on the localhost 8080 port you get this tool already up and running. Once you install you I'm just going to quickly navigate the tool uh, and show you what are the components. So yeah it's not super complex it's got uh, on the left uh, uh, four tabs uh, to navigate through different uh, things uh, within the tool and uh, uh, let's kind of start first by first. The first is the model hub. Uh, this is where all your model kind of exists in a workspace. You can click on create to create a new model or you can just import it uh, directly from GitHub or, or locally, something like that. And uh, the next uh, is uh, the modeling tool. Uh, this is actually the, the, the visual, uh, visual interface of the model where you kind of build the model from scratch here and it shows up here in all the different components uh, when you kind of build it. And you can just drag and drop uh, and also customize it in a, in a fashion. The next uh, is the stats view. Once you kind of create this model, all the stats kind of appear here. Uh, the next one is the test. And I'm gonna, um, the test view, uh, this is where uh, you can run a test uh, over your data set. So moving back, let's get started with uh, creating your first uh, deep learning neural network. So go to the model hub tab. Uh, within the tab, you can click on create. Uh, the create kind of uh, asks you to load your first data set. And that's where you kind of start uh, as an input data set and then kind of work your way through. So it's like a data first approach. So you click on it and you are led to this uh, tutorial folder uh, by default. You can go to the tutorial folder and have all this data set available to you. So they're like three, four different types of data set or you can even use a custom one. Uh, the MNIST data I kind of covered in one of my previous videos on PyTorch and kind of built a deep learning neural net on this data set. But this time I'm going to try something else. Uh, I'm going to try the default COVID-19 data set. 
uh, for this. So let's just quickly look how the data looks like and to further understand uh, what the data is about. So within the COVID-19 data set, uh, there are like the chest X-ray scans of three different type of uh, uh, labels. One would be the normal patient, one with someone with uh, viral pneumonia, and the, the second would be uh, actually COVID-19. So basically then this kind of model uh, uh, we will build, which will already predict from the chest X-ray scan and tell uh, like uh, if it's if it's like a COVID patient or a pneumonia patient or this guy doesn't have anything at all. So to look at the data set, the data set is very simple in terms of uh, what we're going to import to Percepti Labs. So let me quickly click on it. So yeah, let me open Excel just to see how the data looks like. So it's, it's just uh, the, the URL for the image. So it tells uh, which image has which label and that's it. A very simple data set. We've got around like 300 images and we're going to train our model on that. And uh, three labels, uh, COVID, COVID patient, uh, nothing normal and the viral pneumonia and all these images. So quickly checking out a few images of COVID patients would be uh, something like this. And uh, there would be different images. So now we can quickly try to uh, train on the same data set. So if I click on the folder COVID-19, I just need to import this data.csv. Uh, this data.csv I just showed uh, contains the labels and the image URLs. So what will happen, it's going to ask you to define your data set. That's the first thing. We have seen it's got images and label. So we're going to select uh, what is what. So images would be the input for the, the model and the labels would be the output for the model. So if you have a very complex data structure, you, it would be best to kind of reduce your machine learning data set to simpler uh, labels and columns, something like this, we have we are already seen. So the labels we go in the target and that's what we're kind of predicting. So input can be either image, categorical or text, and the output can be like categorical or text. So in our case, it's categorical, it's because three categories, so we're gonna do that. The rest is uh, you can do uh, select the randomized partition, the training validation and test set. Generic um, training ratio would be like 70, 20, 10. 70% 70 would be the training set of the 300 images and validation would be 20% and 10 would be test. So the training of the model would happen on training and validation set and the 10% of the images would not be ever seen by model and that's where we're gonna do a final testing of the model later. So once you have all these, click on next. Uh, within this model, uh, the idea is uh, uh, you, uh, this one This one has the training settings. Uh, it's going to give the path where the model is kind of located, the name of the model. So we're going to call call this model as COVID X-ray predictions. And we're going to select the number of epochs. I would say for this epochs, because the data set is not huge, 50-50 epochs is kind of okay. Uh, usually the, when the data is huge, the batch sizes are huge, but uh, let's keep it a bit bare minimum, which would be five is okay. Uh, I would keep the learning rate as default to start with. Maybe we can uh, kind of improve it uh, later on. And as a loss, I would say the cross entropy would be more important in terms of categorical uh, uh, prediction of the model. So let, let's leave it at cross entropy. So that's where the, your uh, training setting is. Uh, the next step would be either just run the model because it already exists. Uh, it's it's going to run the default model or click on customize to go to the visual navigator. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on customize. So yeah, that's the more important part of this tool is uh, you get a very visual navigator and see what's happening with, within uh, your model exactly. So by default, this tool kind of picks up these images and uh, runs through a few things, which would be one convolution layer and two dense layers to convert it into the final output, which would be the category uh, like zero, one, two, three. So uh, it could be defined as a, a normal uh, a viral pneumonia and a COVID patient. And we have all this data set and it's gonna, uh, the, the input would be these images and the output would be, would be these categories. So very impressive. Um, and you can uh, navigate through this tool easily. A few things to check out is uh, all these tabs. Uh, it's got all these predefined things you can use in, the, in your model. So it would be like processing. It helps you uh, kind of import the gray scale one or encoder or e scale. So these are the processing um, modules. And then there are deep learning modules, the dense convolution, which we are using the dense layers and the convolution layers. Someone can use ResNet, Inception, V3, MobileNet. Maybe they, they will include more things in the future, but now these are uh, the tool is limited with these. And then there are operations, the argmax mod switch. You can use this to 
uh, build custom models. And then the last thing is you can uh, even write simple Python TensorFlow code to build a custom module where it kind of works in your data set in a visual way and you can just connect it. So the way it's going to happen, you can click on, for example, if you want to uh, some starting something from scratch, uh, you want to select convolution, you drag and drop here and you can just connect uh, your input to this convolution layer and kind of shows you the output. So this is how everything is kind of being built and it automatically selects the parameters, the dimensions of these images and, and, and the neural network, the convolution layer network, something like that. So yeah, that's in terms of the modules, but you can always under, try to understand what's happening within the model. I, I think that's the best part of this tool. Uh, you can click on uh, the different convolution layer and what it's kind of doing. So you can click on these different things happening for the model and all these different uh, outputs of this convolution layer and how it's going back into the dense layer. So pretty impressive, right? So you click on uh, one of the modules, you can see uh, the type and you can change it. Uh, the dimension should be remain 2D and these are the default KRS TensorPro arguments uh, for building this convolution layer and you can always click on open code to understand what's happening beneath uh, uh, the, the convolution layer exactly. So this is the actual uh, KRS code being uh, written down and uh, yeah, so the, when once you kind of build this model and export it, all this uh, kind of source code written in Python already export it out uh, in simple KRS, Python, and TensorFlow code, and for you to use. So yeah, you can just navigate your way, way through to understand uh, all all these different layers. You can play around, you can ma mix and match. We uh, for this first dense layer, we're using, using a ReLU. The second dense layer, we're using a softmax. The the first dense layer is converting this output uh, of convolution to uh, uh, 128 uh, variables and then we kind of f further include uh, it into a softmax layer uh, which kind of just points it out into like different three different categories with the ratio so for now I'm just gonna leave things default because we're trying it for the first time uh, but once you kind of build a first version you can play around with these parameters even open code and try out uh, different things and if you have something in mind to build uh, on in a custom way you can always do that with a custom widget. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click and run. Uh, from here, I'm going to, for the run settings, I'm going to define the default epochs. I already did that previously. So I'm going to leave it as is and I'm going to click on run model. All right, it's going to take some time initially to get, get things uh, up and running. And when it's kind of is done, uh, you can already see the training has started. And uh, the best part is uh, it's a very visual approach of training models, which was not there in the past, I would say. Uh, it is going one by one with, via uh, in on all of these images and running through the layers and kind of uh, represent the outputs uh, in real time, something like this. So it's it's kind of showing all the layers of this first uh, uh, first convolution net. You can click on each and kind of understand what's happening when the training is ongoing. Uh, I think that's very impressive. Um, so if first, for example, if you click on the convolution layer, you can see the weights and how the weights are kind of being built. You can uh, hover on it and kind of understand how, how these are different weights and uh, what's uh, what these weights are kind of leading it to as an output. You can see it on the right side. Uh, you can click on the bias tab to understand the, the bias going within uh, the training of the image. And then you can go to gradients to understand further understanding of the gradients, gradients uh, how the gradient descent is. So yeah, uh, there are a few more things I'm gonna, not gonna cover in detail, but you can always see the, the target on what's happening uh, when the training is happening in general. So the, you can see the loss uh, over the epochs, uh, how it's going down, initially it was quite high, now it's kind of very close to zero, and uh, how the accuracy is increasing of the model, uh, how it's uh, performing really well right now because it's a small data set and uh, it's able to do it in the right fashion. And then you can see the precision versus the ground truth, we can see the prediction of each classes, what's happening. And this is all in kind of real time. Uh, very interesting to see and very visual way. Personally, for me, it's very interesting for having uh, an engineering background. Uh, for me, it kind of helps uh, a, an engineer to understand things in details and uh, and see them grow. The next would be global loss and how it's happening, loss over all epochs, loss during this specific epochs, uh, you can see and understand. So yeah, that's it in terms of uh, the training. Uh, it's gonna take some time. Uh, I'm gonna leave it as is. Uh, it's already 10% trained. I kind of left uh, the batches to a small size. That's why it's kind of taking a lot of time. Uh, let's uh, uh, come back when it's done. So we have now the result. Uh, we've got the global loss and the accuracy. The accuracy is like 100% on the training. And uh, it's got on the 92% on the validation. Makes sense because it's seen this data. So 
I trained correctly. So we just need to now check after this model to on the test set. So the next step would be to click on go to test and that's where it's easily helping you to navigate through this. Once you go to the test, you need to select your model. We call we called it COVID ray exit predictions. And uh, on, in, within the text set, uh, we, you can select multiple models and you can compare. Uh, we just have one for now because the idea is like you're gonna build uh, different types of iterations on these models and gonna uh, try out a few things uh, before you finalize anything, right? So for this case, we're gonna select both the confusion metrics and the metrics table. I'm gonna click on test, run test. First thing is gonna load the data and then gonna try to run an inference on the sample. So the, the test set is not huge, it's not gonna take much time. So yeah, it's gonna generate a report, yeah. So that's uh, the test set uh, for this model, uh, the confusion matrix, and out of these, uh, the blue ones are like uh, true positives. And uh, then uh, you can get the label matrix. Uh, within the label matrix, you can see the accuracy is quite high. Precision and recall are quite high. Specifically for this data set, the, the model training is pretty good. So yeah, specifically for this data set, we can get, uh, we're getting very good accuracy. We are also getting high precision and recall, so which is good. So yeah, that's it in terms of uh, the test. Uh, the Now the model has been built. The testing is pretty good as well. Uh, the next logical step would be to use it uh, and export this. So once you go on this model, you can click on it. You can export it to GitHub. You can, you can click on export to locally uh, you can do it as a TensorFlow model because everything uh, been built on TensorFlow Keras. And then you also you can export the whole source code as Jupyter Notebook. So yeah, that's it. Uh, in terms of this video, we, in, we kind of covered all the topics on building a model in an easy way using a tool called Percepti Labs. So I would like to say if you find this video and my channel useful, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps with the algorithm and helps me to promote people like you. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.